How still this forest. How soft this sky. Beneath this thatch a new world sleeps. Then man comes nigh. Swift runs the noisy river. The mad and merry Janice see. Born of the mountains. Bride of the sea. A short life and a merry one. Tumbling and tossing. Reaching northward all the way. Still moments in shady pools. Rushing madly onward once again. Plunging over great falls. Losing itself in the mighty Ontario far from the open sea. The mighty nation, this. The Iroquois feared and respected. Warriors, yet withal a peaceful people. Hard-working and kind-hearted. Their council house at the upper falls of the Genesee. Meeting place of the five nations. The place of wise administration. Who is this woman, anyway? Mary Jemison. White? Or Indian blood? By birth, a white woman, yet so grown to the color of the redskin, so closely come to his habits, that now she thinks herself, heart and soul, one of these Iroquois. Pioneer white woman of the West. Guide, philosopher, friend of white man and of red. She carried the white man's torch into this wilderness. Slowly receding, the native owners of this rich fair land of the Genesee swiftly are entering the new proprietors. First of all is trapper Indian Allen, seeking to build a mill here by the Great Falls. Who are all these newcomers? People of prosperity? Three distinguished pioneers, Rochester, Carroll, and Fitzhugh. Three names to be carried here by the lower falls of the Genesee for years, and years, and years to come. They have come far? from ancient Hagerstown, in Maryland, close to the Valley of the Potomac. Long miles and weary, stout hearts and brave, wilderness and mountains, toil and travail, and women sharing the hard lot of these pioneers. Shrewd trader, this Nathaniel Rochester. He knows full well the value of water power and where he and his fellows will establish their town site. The mad and married Genesee shall turn the wheels of future factories. The wanton shall become a worker. This is the thing that men call vision. I catch the small talk of the Marylanders. They are planning a city here in this wilderness. There are to be streets and open squares, houses, churches, schools. What wild dreams these. These are the things that men call vision. The westward trek has now begun. A slender rivulet of folk, headed straight toward the setting sun. A steady torrent has become men, horses, wagons, and coaches. In serried ranks, westward ho! And falter not. Westward ho! And falter not. At Rochester they halt. Perchance the reputation of the town has spread afar. Some tarry here and go no farther. For others, the road forks wide. Two roads in fact. The one, along the ridge doth go. The other, south, to Buffalo. Night and day and day and night the travelers halt and then press on again. A restless folk, unending train. I've heard it said that in the passing of a single day, not less than 60 stages come this way to the taverns of our Rochester. A mighty traffic this. And more to come. A gentleman of fair renown. From far without the limits of this town. Who is this man Sam Patch? A curious fellow came out of some New England state. He brags too much. He doth relate of all his prowess here and there. He jumped at Patterson, the chasm bridge, and then not far from here up the ridge into the deep falls of Niagara. And lived to tell the tale.
The mills of Rochester, perched high upon the Jena Sea, grind slowly, but they grind exceedingly well. Rochester in the mid-50s was a grave, gay town. A brisk town. Busy with many businesses. And yet, withal, a town of charm and culture. Where industry walks hand in hand with intelligence. The reputation of this town has spread afar. Folk come to see it and to admire its beauty. Gone are our peaceful yesterdays. Gone their quiet and repose. What future near? No man yet knows. What means all this? This mad excitement, quivering air. I like it not. Is this war? Yes, this is war, or the near approach to it. Men must fight. Yet in the soul of womankind, our agony shrieks in muted voices. Yours are not the only souls that must be torn. The year is 1884. Just 50 years have passed, no more, since Rochester first attained the dignity of cityhood. The pioneers are gone. Two generations since have come to do their city full honor and full service. Pioneer Hamlet Scranton wrote, In less than 60 years T-spot where this house stands will be the center of a great city. A man, undaunted, keeps bobbing up serenely. His name is Daniel W. Powers. For soon these carriages will multiply. Automobile is the name that men will give the strange device and drive it, far and fast. The horseless carriage, born this day here will last.
The mad and merry Genesee, long since harnessed, tamed, enslaved to man's best efforts, still in its sweet childhood. The gentle river is coming slowly through the green fields, twisting and turning its leisurely way. Hurrying not. This is the valley of peace and beauty. This is the valley of understanding. Life in this green valley of the Genesee is neither drab nor gray. Much work. Much play. Time passes quickly. A hundred years have come and gone. Centuries of progress, each of these, marching in brisk parade. Each year a drama, with its many scenes and phases. The struggling town, a wholesome city it has become. Grown to its sweet majority. This city's fame is spread far from its own dominions. The fair name of Rochester has reached across the land and then across the sea. To her throughout these years have come folk speaking many tongues. Seeking sympathy. Seeking America. Seeking to be Americans. To all of these, Rochester accords her hospitality. Her citizens they become. And they, too, to her pride. Our play is done. This century and more its full course now has run. We say farewell, farewell to you, and you, and you. In another century, 2034 we'll welcome you upon this ground. You, and you, and you. Still more. The century's done, and yet, Rochester her course has but begun. The years may come, the years may go. The faith of our founders rides bravely with them. Rochester will continue to grow in beauty and in strength, but remember, a city stands, a city grows, only by its own ability. Man to man and woman to woman, courage, faith, nobility. This is the thing that men call vision. Thank you for attending the Pageant of Rochester. Tomorrow, August 24th, See Prosky's Bengal Tigers at 1 o'clock and 6.30, or the Diving Horse at 2.30 and 11 p.m. There is a concert by Schlager Post Legion Band at 3 o'clock. The Rochester Civic Orchestra has concerts at 6.45 and 9.30 at the Viennese Garden. Plus on Saturday, our special guest will be Ed Wynn, star of the Fire Chief radio program.